well, we have a change. Now it looks like, Janik, they are going by a gentleman's agreement to pick the same tracks just in reverse order to have yeah. it all laid out. So great sportsmanship here. Don't want to really cause any drama by no, uh, this is the thing. <laughs> I mean, it would be really mean just to ban the first pick your opponent had. Yeah. That's just rough. And now we're going to have the uh, random track come through. Still arrow pipes, I believe. Or is it reps? Reps the random map? It looks like, yeah, reps the random map. So actually, uh, this redo will have a different map seven. We it will. That? And we won't get it to, it's to see arrow pipes, which is a little unfortunate. Aww. It's still going to be a long match to get us there. But starting True. to slow down now. We know the leaderboard times. A good time to drive in match is a 56. You get to 56, you are most likely going to win rounds. You're never really going to get last with a 56. And um, also, can we just see in chat once again, who are you guys cheering for? Let us hear it out loud. Are you on team ITB or are you on team KC? Yeah, put the, put, and also put the prediction in. Hello? You, you call yourself a true KC fan if you don't all in with all your channel points? True. Didn't think so. Honestly. I mean, you got to believe here in your team. Let's see a big prediction in the chat for the team you're rooting for. We're starting with a warm up here. Some last adjustments being made. We have two rosters of young, promising players. And Bren here, as you said earlier, hopefully acting as sort of a mentor here to get Oltak into the game. Um, in this team, he's taken on a leadership role with the pace, driving consistently, driving good times, and kind of letting Otak go for these wild records that often don't facilitate. Right now, we need to see a more consistent Otak if they are to beat into the breach. True. I mean, Otak has been pretty consistent here, specifically on slowdown, but it's going to be interesting to see what ITB has in store for us, as they have not publicly been playing this map. So whether or not they're going to have a crazy uh, showcase now or not, that's going to be up to these rounds. As we head into the first round, Mime is currently in the lead, and we already have the first mistake as you said otag unfortunately not there with the consistency hitting that inside wall and it's gonna be um up to bren to see if he can pick up that first place against mime yeah and i think it stems from just that wish of wanting to drive so perfectly so optimally everywhere but sometimes it's often uh possible to run the risk of getting on the wrong side of that and crashing here though bren chasing mime for the first place in slowdown, we're gonna see him go wide. I think mine for the inside tree line. Very oh. well executed, but we hear a scream across the room from <laughs> Mudgy Stream, who's casting into the Breach players as Mime falls out of the track there. That's a win for KC. That is a win for KC. That is uh, a little bit of an unfortunate airtime coming in from mine there. Um, he's, he's going for the inside line there between the trees, just like Carl Jr., just like Pack has showcased the last couple of. Uh, of days but i mean it is also a little bit risky if you just get a little bit more speed or the wrong trajectory you end up getting a bunch of air time and that's gonna just throw you out the map it is new opportunity here for otak for elcon as well elcon with a one second mistake in the opening 10 seconds just some tech turns there to get past and often a place you don't expect to see crashes now we're going into the bobsleigh Mime setting up a little bit wider than Brendan Otak and losing some speed in sideline here. We saw a really clean setup though for Mime in that slowdown section at the end. And here he could look to secure a draw, but they are right there by him. They are just lying in wait for just a small mistake to get an ace here. Mime needs to be perfect in this identity on the inside line. Now keeping the grip, keeping about a car length lead. The speed oh, is not Mime there! Again. And the ace comes through for KC, 5-1. to 5-1. One. to one. Mime, like, he's trying to push it. I mean, I respect it. I respect that he's trying to push that hard that he accidentally just flies off the map. Um, but he needs to not do that again because uh, KC is getting a little bit too heavy of a lead. They are building that lead very quickly here. 5-1, to one, halfway to 10. That thing you need to get to. And we, we know Into the Breach has the pace. On every map that we looked at, their stats are better. They are driving a little bit faster consistently, but the mistakes come through. Alcon and Bren both crash, and they're gonna be equal. Very interesting round here. A battle for first and a battle for third. Very important who wins either one. That's what's so good about this format. Even if players crash, there's still gonna be multi-layered battles here. Yeah, now we see two individual battles, as you said. One for first and one for third here. Bren 
with a huge mistake, three seconds behind. And now Elcon and Mime could be taking home these two points, trying to equalize the score just a little bit. Let's see if Mime can keep his tires on the ground this time. Otag with an attack there, almost overtaking. Mime will maintain the lead though. He is making sure he doesn't fall off, but Otag is driving so fast, getting the airtime in the ending. Oh, and Mime will get that first place. If he crashed that pillar a little bit harder, they would have gotten ace. Otak went all in for that to try to beat his rival. He gained time the identity, but Mime does now keep ground contact and takes a very important win for Into the Breach. If they didn't win that round, the momentum would be very hard to come back from that Casey was building up. They get a new chance at life here, but Alcon and Mime, they need to avoid these crashes. The outside dirt line is there for them now, and Otak is the one left in fourth, about two tenths of a second behind. Yes, here we go. Once again, Mime Bren in the lead. Mime has showcased some incredible pace on this map so far. He's been in the lead almost every single round going into the identity. Unfortunately, he has flown out the map a couple of times, but that just goes to show that Into the Breach are able to take home this map win still. But Elka needs to see if he can get a little bit closer and maybe hope for a mistake from Bren. Both Mime and Bren are going to push as hard as they can here. Bren going for the wider line. Mime going inside. He will have more speed though here, Bren. And it looks like he gets such a clean ending. Bren takes <laughs> home the victory with a 69-6. Or 59-6. 50. 56-6. Oh my god. Also one of the fastest match times we've seen on this map. Only Gwen really driving faster with a 56.58, and that is just 1,200 from the world record. Bren, really great performance there to secure the draw for his team. 7 to 4. They are now at track point in ace to win, and still chances for Into the Breach. Next round out, they have again passed Otak, but Bren is really strong up in first. He has some great drifts coming through in the second half, also building up a lot of speed there for the bobsleigh. Very interesting line from Brad. It looked like he did the turn wrong, but he was just setting up for as much speed as possible in the bobsleigh turn. Remains in first, but he has two hawks trying to chase him <laughs> down right here. Just look at this. A wheel length away for both Into the Breach players, but Brad is right there. Otak only a tenth as well. All four players are here. This could shake up any which way. Mime in first right now before the last part. Brad jumping Ooh. out, and a win for Into the Breach is likely, but the ace will be denied. Otak, 900s ahead of Elcon. These races are awesome. Like, great races coming in from these players right now. They're doing the ending flawlessly as well. All throughout the map actually looks really flawless and only about 200 or two tenths of a second separating the players there in the end. So after a minute of driving that the players are still one tenth, two tenth uh, away from each other, that just goes to show that they've been practicing this and the consistency is there on both teams. Let's take a look at Bren's line here in the start again. Right here after this grass part, he did something very interesting where it looks like he's failing here by going so wide. But this speed carries all the way into the bobsleigh. Look how much faster him and Otak are compared to Elkan and Mime there. Elkan with a mistake, of course, but they've gained about 1500s to Mime just in that one turn alone by going wider into the dirt. And now KC could win the map because of it. This is maybe why they picked it. That small optimization is making it very tough for Mime, who now has to pass both players in this identity. The inside tree line is what he goes for. He gets past momentarily, but does oh. he have the speed to remain ahead? They're right there with him, Otak, but it's not gonna be enough. Mime holds on and we go another round, nine to seven. I mean, that's just a great showcase by Mime right there. He recognized I had to push here. If I don't get first, we lose the match or we lose the map. Um, and then he just risked it, fully risked it to get that first place. And he got it. And now into the breach, can close it out with an ace as well. This is going to be the side around nine to seven will always be the last round of a map. Either team with a chance to win, but much more paths to victory for KC. The only thing that does need to happen is what you see right now is them getting aced, getting third and fourth. The wide setup here for that bobsleigh turn again, Elkon missing it. He's going to oh. be far behind actually, and this is so important for KC. They're going to be able to build about a second lead to Elkon, and so long as one of them are ahead of him, they will win the map. This has to come through on the comps right now. 
Don't risk the end. Just stay ahead of Alcon and we will win regardless. Yeah, and this ending is kind of easy to make sure that you don't just don't fall out. If they say to each other, we just have to save. It doesn't matter if Mime is ahead. Makes no difference. Uh, Elcon is 0.7 of a deficit behind here and they just save it into the ending. They get the map. Clean, concise victory there for KC, recognizing the state they're in. Taking a 10A win on their own map but now they have to fight into the breach on their specialty. We're going on to parkour. And parkour is one of those maps where we've seen so many players fall out here in the ending. So it's going to be an interesting map to see just how consistent the players are. Look at this snipe though. Mime on the inside line trying to hold on to first, but gets that jump and that's the ace where KC wins the round. And then I think we're going to have that beautiful, beautiful round with the line from Bren, going so wide, getting the speed, beat Mime in the bobsleigh. Maybe something we'll see other teams do as well later in the tournament. Yeah, I mean, obviously all the other teams, they're watching their opponents be playing. So uh, watching these lines coming in, it's something that everybody's studying as they are happening. It is for sure. The map is starting here, parkour. This is an Into the Breach specialty. And KC, we'll see what they can do as we have a quick pause waiting for Otak to rejoin, so not quite yet. But we can talk about just how great uh, parkour looks for Into the Breach here. Elkon has the best median and the best personal best during the rounds right now. He has a median of a 102.79. So anything 102 is honestly going to be fine, but is, Elkon is looking strong. Is this actually the first match we see from KC on parkour? I think so, yeah. We haven't seen them on this map yet, so we, we don't know what they're capable of, but we know Mime and Alcon are first and third in terms of stats in the league on, on this map. So, uphill battle for sure, uh, but what if they win it? If they win this map against Into the Breach, that has to be really detrimental. You lose your best map. You lose your best map. Yeah, I mean, Into the Breach, they really picked, They as we saw, they picked the maps that they're, they're just so strong on. So, oh, we jump into the first round right now. Otak did come back. And now we are heading into parkour as we go through the first map or the first round. Everybody trying to get that speed for this first jump here. They want to land on the left side and get a drift to the right. And now comes the drop downs into the ice turn. This ice turn can be super tricky. We're going to see a few different lines. Elkon and Mime going a little bit uh, earlier into that ice slide that Bren and Otag, but it seemed to equalize. Then you want to go for a low line here on the half pipe, going into a risky line on the bobsleigh. Yeah, here into the breach tends to gain a lot on other teams. Look at that exit speed for Mime. The bobsleigh turn, they figured something out into the breach where they consistently gain more speed and now the identity. This is a series of jumps where you need to have pixel perfect precision. You need to land in the exact right spots, tilt the car the right way to get this landing particularly Mime getting it really good. Brand respawning here. And Alcon and Mime are looking for an ace here. They will get it. And Clean that, first that round. Yeah, and that just shows that the stats that they've been showcasing here the last couple of uh, days. The hits don't lie. Yeah, no, they don't. They, I mean, the, yeah, the pace doesn't lie. And into the breach, just showcasing that to be true. 102.6, a great winning time. About half a second off of the world record from Scrappy. 102.11, but that time is enough to win most rounds here. You're it is. never going to play parkour that is in. fast. Um, so yeah, no, Into the Breach showcasing that they still got what it takes to win here on parkour, and now Otak and Bren are feeling it by, like, just personally how difficult it can be to beat ITB on this map. But it's so tough, right, because you only have one ban. They decided to ban Gyroscope, which was a map that together they had about 10 crashes, I think 9 crashes in uh, eight rounds or something like that that they played on it. So Gyroscope was a disaster for KC and they might just have to bite the bullet on this map and go through it. But Otak is looking to fight the opponents. He has a good start. The problem is this bobsleigh turn. Again, the exit speed will be there and they're catching up to him before the identity. It's going to be both into the breach players again up there in the fight for first looking for the ace. Otak is chasing down Mime right now though. Onto the first playing jump. Want to get a lineup for this jump right here cannot tilt the car too much or you won't make the subsequent part elcon's made a mistake and i think they're gonna get out of this one with a draw 
but it's still showcasing the consistency that Mime has there. In the ending, you also see just how wide he goes on the dirt uphill just before the identity, making sure that he gets a landing that um, grips the grips the road for the entirety of the jump. That's um, that's very, very difficult. And he gets like, I would say at least like one or two hundreds out of that every time. He does. It's a really clean strategy to get that. Also the bobsleigh, I think it's just about how they approach the curve itself. Are these tiny details that make or break the round or into the breach? But here we go, next round. The reason the other teams aren't doing that is because they're always very close to crashing as well, has to be said. That sometimes you will see ITB fail this bobsleigh part and put their round in jeopardy. Two red players ahead right now though, Bren close by, but not going to be close after this bobsleigh turn into the breach. Both get it right. Two tons of a second of a lead. Very tough spot here to deny the ace. Brand with a beautiful uphill. Good speed into this jump. It's going to catch oh. up to Alcon at least. More speed than mine too. Mine makes a mistake. Brand could win this round for his team. Just got to remain ahead of the red car. On to the booster now. High jump, but he gets the speed. Side flip oh, from Brand. Okay, Brand is flexing. Brand is flexing on his opponents there with the barrel roll into the finish. Now, that is the optimal strategy, actually. And all the players know this. Like, it's not a new strategy. It's been it's been discovered quite a while ago, but it is so risky to do in a rounds format. I think he got the call from Otak there. It's a close round, go risk. And he's just like, sure fam, no worries. Let me do the barrel roll strat. And he makes it work. It saves three to four tenths of a second if you nail it just right. Brand there. Huge clutch for Casey. Huge clutch, and now they equalize the score to a 4-4, and all of a sudden, ITB isn't looking that strong anymore. And this is huge for the mental of Karma and Corb as well. Like, just going in and getting an ace like that is great for the mentality. But now Mime and Elkhorn once again going into the lead here on the half-pipe jump. I think Ben is confident. I think he's going to go for it again. I think he's going to try so? the barrel roll again because this spot, the only way you make it look any better is if you catch up to one or two of them. He has nothing really to lose by trying this. I think we're going to see Brent try it. Otak might be the anchor, just holding down the safe line. They do not want to get aced here, so are they going to risk it all and do the flip? Here we go, the last booster. Brent is not lining up for it. One crash, and Brent has more speed. He can maybe get past mine, but no, it's going to end in a draw. I mean... A assuming that there's going to be at least one crash is also usually a fine assumption, but whether it's going to be on your team, on the other team, you never know. Here, they were lucky that Elkon got a bad crash and ending up in, a in another draw. Yeah, I think they actually caught that and then decided not to do it last second. Mm. Ren is, uh, has shown he has the potential to go for it, but really, they are making ITB struggle on their map choice here. This is not the 10-0 stomp maybe predicted on parkour. Casey are looking great at this. Yeah, Casey are doing way better than, you know, most people probably would have thought of against ITB on a map like this. ITB on paper, once again, are the greatest team on this map. So the fact that uh, Casey can stand up to them and equalize the score this well uh, goes to show that they've been practicing. Another close round here, all four players within a tenth. Alcon a little bit behind. Not going to be the case after the oh! slay, I think. But Mime, his teammate, now showing the dangers of that line. Why not every team goes for it? He has a very tough mission to do here. And the roles are reversed. Is Alcon going to try the side flip to catch up to Bren or secure perhaps second place here? He is setting up wide. Alcon crashing, Bren oh, crashing, everybody and crashing. crashed as well. Can Mime actually join the fight here and he ace? Can and they ace it. What an incredible turn of events. A 104 for the victory. A couple of seconds behind the actual pace that people should be driving. But they're going to say thank you very much for that. Everybody gets a crash this round. That's okay. We take home the ace anyway. With how far right Alcon and Brent both went for that, it looked like they were going for the flip. 8 Could to be. 5 now. Track point. And a potential for Into the Breach to close it out with a win. We will see now. The danger with that line is that if you land on your side wheels, it actually doesn't save time. You have to land flat and accelerate immediately. It's very sketchy to do so. It is. As we go into this ice slide and half pipe jump, mime is fighting with Otak. Where is Bren? Bren is a little bit further behind. This could be dangerous. Into the breach, they just need a first and a third place here. So if Mime overtakes Otak, Otak needs to maintain this lead. 
Where do we have... Oh, the three players in the back. They're all so close to each other. Going into the uphill. Who's going to get the most speed going into this jump right now? Elkon trying to pressure from the back. Almost overtaking. Overtaking both the players. But going so wide. He's going to make a mistake. And now it's down to Mime. Is he going to get that first place ahead of Otak? Jumping really far right. He is almost doing the barrel roll strat. Not going for it. Brent with a little more speed. But not able to overtake. And it's going to be another uh, draw. Amazing round, though. The times are incredible. 102.5 and 2.6 is from Casey, and it's only enough for a draw. That is crazy. You would usually ace with a round like that from Casey. They have practice map. This is actually one of their better ones, and I think they knew this is a map into the Reach Wood Pick, so you might as well prepare for it, right? And True. it's showing that they've done that. 6 to 9 now. A draw for Into the Reach is a win guaranteed, but we will have to see if Casey can whip up an ace and make it very exciting in parkour here they have to pass both of them though to do that yes into the breach needs to be fourth third and fourth if uh carmine corp has any chance of maintaining any sort of leverage on this map but it does not look like they're gonna go down without a fight here we have ITB with that risky bobsleigh line taking first place. You can see the speed that Elkan has now going into the uphill. Bren needs to fight for it. Otak also needs to fight for it. Both Carmine Corp players needs to be first and second. Here it comes down to the identity. Elkan is in the lead. Will it be able to maintain it? Everybody making perfect jumps, but Elkan is just not able to lose that speed and they will take it home with an ace. Strong showing there in the last round for ITB. Alcon and Mime, this is their best map, I think. It's the reason they first picked it. They got surprised, I think, a bit by Carmine Corp's pace, but they still make it work, and they equalize the maps one to one. Yes. Let's take a look at some of these replays where Bren... Um, oh, the flip. This is the flip yes. round. Look at this, ladies and gentlemen. A beautiful demonstration of skill here. Bren landing wide and thinking, yeah, I might as well just go for it. Sends it and lands down at the finish platform, saving about two to three tenths. Yeah, and now here we have Into the Breach coming back with their own ace somehow by uh, getting a little bit lucky with some of these crashes from Carmine Corp here. You see Elkon gets uh, even a crash himself and still gets the that ace. That was such a quick save. He it was. recognized exactly how to save that, and I wonder if when he practiced, he might have looked at, if this happens, what do I do? Because it's better than respawning, and that's how they won. They did, and now we go into freestyle. We saw this map earlier here today. It's a map that has a very difficult identity, once again, where you want to jump from wall riots over to, ha or to quarter pipes, and we've seen multiple people fail this. Yeah, Carmine Corp really favors this map, though. They've picked it in most of their matches, and... They also have good times. Otak driving 107.7, Bren often driving 108 low, but really consistent. And they did do quite well, if I remember, against Sinners on this map. Not sure how the G1 match went though, but they're doing the sideways line. This is one of the only teams that does the ice slide landing. Wide setup here, try to build speed for the uphill. Gear up early, and they're gonna be flying away here. KC on their own map. Could start out with an ace, but we know this ending is scary. You need fourth gear here if you're going to get a good ending. Mime lost it, but got it back just in time to have a chance at this identity. Bren has respawned. He's out of it. A draw at best now for Otak. Needs to hold on the second flick, and he lands it. Otak really strong here. 106 107.6 uh, here. 107.6. It's also worth mentioning that Mime... Uh, he drove the 108 and his best time during the tournament of the six rounds that he's been playing now seven rounds uh, is uh, a 108.2 so he needs to to showcase better uh, pace to and be like, able to fight for this first place like that is a fast time right but it is the worst match record of any team that's played this map yep. he is the slowest currently with a 108.2 as his fastest so i think mime has prepared for this Casey, they were going to play this anyways. If it was left open and needs to show that he's prepared for it. Otak with a crash there before the no seer, but a worse crash from Elkon in the no searing part, leaving it to a one versus one up front. And Otak's the closest, so all to push for here for Bren. With Elkon that far, I think Bren can really risk it here to try to get the win. I think he can as we get into the final uphill before the identity. Bren will take that first place. 
and actually he presses the brake button to land early to make sure that he can accelerate as much as he can on the downhill and now Mime has to attack actually gets a Brand lot of speed gear. going Brand in lost there. the gear he has to 360 it's the only way to save that when you are in third gear and that leaves an opportunity for Mime to get the draw for his team that's again that third, fourth gear difference in the downhill. Exactly. But there's a lot of optimizations as we saw, Brent. Oh, and speaking of M Mime's time? Oh, 107.7. There you go. Mime showcasing that he has indeed gotten the consistency and the pace. Uh, the last week, he's been practicing this map specifically and beating his own time by, you know, half a second. 107.7 is a great time. The world record is a 107.36 from Glenn that he drove in match. Last week against KC, actually. That Impressive. was when Glenn set that. So KC have faced really tough opposition on a map that they enjoy, but they are no strangers to driving 107.7. That is a time they can match. And that's the time they're looking for as well and thinking, yeah, we can beat that. Now going into the round, they're looking to do so. No mistakes yet, but all kind of a little bit further behind than the rest. He is as we head into this wall ride on the ice. Want to make sure that you jump low and end in an ice slide. I think that's what most of the players are opting for right now. And it indeed looks like all the players went for that. O-Tag is now going to be in the lead. Bren getting such an incredible amount oh, of speed. Mistake. Slowing down, landing early. Mime crashing a little bit, losing about a second. He's not going to catch up unless there's a mistake from KC. And Elcon is also trailing here by about two tenths. Low jump there from Elcon and a poor landing as well. This is an ace waiting to happen. Bren is right there, just a little bit behind. But will he get it? No, he will not. He will just secure a standard victory. And Otak, as I said, he sees a 1.1077. He drives a 1076. Incredible pace there coming in from Otak. But we need to see the consistency of both Otak and Bren on the same run. Because right now, when one person does great, the other person has a tendency to make a mistake. And they, we need them both to be on their game on the same match. Yeah, that leaves it very close. And it also means that ITB, despite looking, I'd say, a little bit less sharp in these first rounds, it's only one point behind because of the, as you mentioned, the difference in mistakes. Exactly. Here we also saw Elkon go for an inside line on the dirt uphill right there instead of going wide, which is a little bit faster, but going inside is a lot safer. And that's why we saw Elkon up for that consistency is key on a lot of these um, matches here. And we see him not that far behind, only point one up to Mime. So all the players, they're going to be driving right next to each other. We see identical lines coming in. Some players jumping a little bit higher than others, but the preferred line is going as low as possible as Otak clearly Clearly demonstrated oh, getting in speed. first. Yeah, he is rocketing away in first place now. Bren as well into second place. We said they had to do this in the same round if they are to win their own map. Right now they're looking to do it. Both have the gear. Bren a lot faster than Otak though into the wall ride. Will get that first play together with his teammate. Can Mime have a say in this round? It's 15 hundredths needs to push it or else they will get oh. ace. But Bren does the job for him. He makes a mistake and Mime takes second. What a and winning time from Otak. Otak, a 107.45 is crazy fast. We're talking less than one tenth away from world record. So once again, insane pace. But we need the consistency. We it's need still to only see. one point. It's yeah, still, it's only, still one point. only one point separating the teams. We need to see the consistency coming in from Carmine Corp. Both the team members need to be first and second to take like that step ahead. And we said we needed to see consistency from Otak in this game. This is a way better map for him in consistency wise than slowdown was. But now Bren is the one making the mistakes, and he really has to clean up his act here if his team is to win the map, needs to stop crashing that identity and the part before it, getting the gear so vital here oh. for their winning chances. Mime, low, er, low as you can go there basically with the ring, getting the speed now in the uphill, but again, blue team, better no slides up and they have so many opportunities at this ace, they haven't gotten it yet. Is it finally gonna come through now? Wide setup, Otak missing the gear. That's not gonna be an ace. Now Bren has to hold for a draw here. Oh, Ooh, mistake Elkon from Elkon. Mime mistake. With good Does he speed have enough speed? Mime has good speed. Mime could win this round for into the breach. I think Elkon has the speed for the flick. And yes, they will indeed win the round and tie up the scoreline. That's score line. crazy. The pace Carmine Corp has is insane. I mean, Mime won with a 108 here, which is like half a second slower than what we saw last round. It's just Carmine Corp cannot find the consistency to get both the players through that identity without mistakes. Yeah, when they have one of the players driving really fast, it ends in a draw. 
when they're both driving good times, it ends in a win for Into the Reach, or barely a win for themselves. 6-6 six to six leaves a chance for Into the Reach to steal away their map, despite looking like the weaker team on it. Yeah, I mean, we're just gonna have to see right now. They're both teams on six points. It's get, it's, it's more tight than I think Carmine Corp was expecting here. And now all the players once again right next to each other. Elkon with a very, very risky line. Might as well have hit that checkpoint, but did not. And now he's gonna lose a little bit of speed because he jumped a little further left than he intended. And there you see Bren just getting up there beside him. This is a close identity section. Otak in the lead. I think Bren will try to see if he can attack Mime to get that ace. Anything could happen right now. And all the players make the jump except Elcon and mine will be alone in the lead and once again it looks like indeed we will have another draw but what a time 107 40 Otak says I can do this time mine says I can do one better they are close to breaking the max world record from Gwen 107 36 four hundredths dude yeah four hundredths away and it's a draw all that for a draw seven to seven both teams are now at track point, an ace would do it. And Otak and Bren have been looking for it the most times, but it could just as well happen that Into the Breach, with one clean round here, knock them out. Yeah, I mean, this could go towards any team. Both the teams have players making mistakes in the ending. It's one ace for either team. They take home the victory. But if uh, if we just get more draws, I'm not against that virtual. But look at how Carmine Corp build their leads consistently. It starts right here with their setup for the ice part. They jump a little bit more to the right side of the ring on the landing, so they can set up wider. They get gear four quite early on into the uphill here, and then no slide. You don't want to slide at all. Better speed for Oltak. Bren missing it a little bit, but still you can see the build up happening. That is how they do it. That's their best part. And now the identity where Elkan and Mime have shined really brightly in this match. We have low speed for Bren, I believe, out of the frame. And Elkan will jump up in the battle for first. Bren oh. makes a mistake. Oltak is holding on right now, trying to deny the ace. Mime, if he passes him, they will win the map, but he oh. misses it. Oltak, oh my god, Oltak! And it's a draw! It's another draw! There's no way! <laughs> Okay, I mean, this is incredible. We've had how many draws so far? It is insane. We've had only draws except two rounds where uh, it went to each team. So eight to eight right now. If you get first and third on, on the match here, if you just get a victory, you get the points. Uh, An ace will also give you the victory, but like, this is too tight to call. What a match so far. And this is where the small differences really start to matter at a zero to zero scoreline. You can afford a lot of things happening. Here, you can ha not have anything go wrong. It is decisive at this point. Looking at the start, all players making it through. The pace has slowed down a little bit in the start. They don't want to take big risks now. They just want to get to the end with a decent time, oh, Elkon! Elkon! And he's trapped in a respawn loop. He has to continue that. Now Mime forced to get a draw for this map to continue for Into the Breach. Carmine Corp just need one player to pass him to win this map for themselves. The identity coming up. All eyes on Mime. Can he defend? He hits oh, the checkpoint. No! Going wide. Two blue players. Only the identity to stop them. They get across. It's a little bit chatty, but it's still enough to do it. Maybe even a side flip here looking at the splits. And now they're going to go for the flick. But KC win their own map. Although, just like parkour, not as clean as it could no, have been. I mean, that was stressful. Honestly, that was way tighter than I thought as well, and I'm incredibly impressed by the time that Mime drive, uh, drove, like a uh, 0.4 flat. That is incredibly well played. And oftentimes the rounds were not decided just in the identity alone. As we saw there in that middle part, the reactor dirt is really, I think, where KC dealt the knockout blood consistently, because they were first and second every time into the identity just because of this. Oh, 100%. And you, yeah, you see ITB being a little bit slower, but that does not mean they're slow all the time as we see right now. Mime getting that incredible 107.407 here for ITB. Just 0 0.04 away from the world record. Do you want to know the scary part though? Otak was two tons out of Mime there before the NFC. Oh my Otak god. Otak was on a disgusting run before he crashed, but still an amazing time from uh, Mime. On the map, Curious to see that record go lower as the season progresses. We're on slippy slides, and Janik, this is an amazing map for Into the Breach. It's going to be tough for Casey to hold on. 
It is gonna be tough for KC to hold on. It's gonna be tough for anybody to hold on on this map. We, I, we see so many crashes on this map. It is hard to predict what's gonna happen. Not just the ending, but throughout the map. This is definitely one of those maps that are the toughest to go clean through. It is surviving slippy slides and especially the ending bug slides is extremely tough. The precision required, the speed required to pass the identity with finesse is not that easy. So we will see the players try their best now. So coming up to the first bug slides. No slide here from mine. Bren missing it, I believe, and falling down into fourth place. An opportunity for Into the Breach to actually ace the very first round. Bug slide on the reactor booster here. And a quick ice slide to correct your trajectory. As we see Elkin going by, but catching a lot more speed than both oh. Mime and Otak. Mistake. Otak in first. The bug slides are happening here as well. The identity. Three bug slides in a row. If you overangle, turn more than 90 degrees, you don't get grip. You have to get them right. Otak trying to deny the ace. Gets a good bug slide in the finish. 111.7. 111.7 is a great time as well. But, I mean... Uh, it's difficult to say what's going to happen because I believe that KC, uh, this is the first time they're playing this on stage. So we don't actually know what their pace is. We know that Into the Breach, they don't have uh, the worst pace, but they're definitely um, not the greatest players on this. Yeah, Mime's best is a 111.3 here that he played in last week's games, I believe against uh, BDS. We do have some really strong records here, but they also struggled surviving that identity, often crashing in the setup for it or in the middle of it. It's hard to get the just the right bug slide trajectories. In the start here, though, he's leaving the other players far behind. Two tenths to Bren, four tenths to Oaken, o, uh, Otak, and five tenths to Alcon. Mime is looking really sharp in the start. Yeah, Mime does seem to know what is going on here on Slippy Slides, and he's looking to be on a great run. Maybe he can close it out here, going for the inside box slide line. This seems to be the preferred line by most players, and now we head into the identity. Bren, not too far behind, but we are talking about half a second. He needs to really risk this if he wants to overtake. I don't think he's going to try to, I think he's just going to try to save it. Elcon with a mistake, he will be able to make it to the finish, but I think uh, I think he's still gonna get third. 111 point. Wait, that's one. world record. That is, I believe, world record on the map. Uh, he just drove an insane time there, Mime. The Slippy Slides world record was a 111.15 from Dexter, and Mime just broke it. So amazing stuff from Mime. He also, just looking at the stats, out of 13 rounds played on this map before this game, he had won eight of them. So his <laughs> win rate as well is formidable. I love the little just Brent typing. Nice time in chat down at the bottom left. Just, oh, it's oh, just yeah. world record. Nice yeah, time. Yeah, nice, nice time. Nice time. Nice yep. time. And then a quick thank you right afterwards. The, the players are definitely, there's there's a great community in Trickmania and, and the pro players are friendly to each other all the way around. So it's just nice to see them, you know, give that sportsman-like content. But like when someone drops a 111-1, you can't help but just congratulate them oh, on exactly. an amazing round. Like that is, the, the precision required to drive at that pace is stunning. So they all know it. They all recognize it when they see it. Mime was about three times ahead of the leading player at this point in the round, in his previous run. It was just so hard to keep up with, so... Amazing stuff, but he's doing it again. Elkon making a mistake, but Mime again up near first place on this map. Really looks like one of his best ones in the map pack. Bren close, though, before the first slide. Inside line from Mime. Bren gonna get inside on this one, but that means Mime might have the better ending set up. Going for it now, oversliding! Oh! Bren will win the round, 111.97, and Otak gets third, giving Carmine Corp a win. They're ahead on the Eyes of the Reach map. They are, and this just showcases, uh, I mean, this should be obvious at this point, that even if you have the best pace, literally world record pace, if you cannot do that consistently, that means that your opponents are still going to get the map victory. And they are ahead now. I think this match might come down to whichever team wins their opponent's choice, because... They have looked dominant on their own map so far, but no team has yet to draw a win on their opponent's map. And if they do and go to their own map next, that could be that. That could be it. I agree 100%. Uh, and I think that's generally what you want to do. If you can best your opponent on their own map pick, not only is it great for the points, but it's also great for the mental. If your opponents think that they can't even beat you on the map that they pick themselves, that is uh, psychologically just a great advantage to have. 
So we see KC in the lead once again with Bren up there. Otak trying to fight for third with Alcon. Still really good pace from KC. It's the first time we see them play this map in the tournament. We have not seen them on Slippy Slides. They're delivering right now, keeping up with Into the Breach. One of the best teams on this map. Bren really far ahead before the end. It's the Otak coming up into second right now. Looking for a potential ace. Oh, oh Bren, Bren getting a big jump. Really weird interaction with the water there. Oh, slide Mime. from Mime. Otak trying his best to save this slide from going to oh, disaster. <laughs> It's disaster all the way around. Elcon winning. I think Brett is second place somehow. Mime right behind in third. And Otak fourth. After all is said and done, it's a win for Into the Breach. Yeah, they will equalize the score. Um, that was a little bit of a hectic ending. I think every single person made a mistake there on the identity. Because, once again, they just want to land in as 90 degrees as possible. And if you just land a little bit too much of a of an over angle, you just end up sliding out and you have to respawn. And it, it's wet plastic. The only way you have grip on wet plastic is if you get a bug slide. Yep. Anything else, you're just not even remotely going to have grip on the surface. So, and Otag lost his bug slide and slid out just off the side. It wasn't even over angle. He just unfortunately missed the bug slide tap. But that is what can happen in a round. Mime again with a really quick start here, Janik. The checkpoint splits, we will have them coming up, but I think he is on for another, dare yeah. I say, 110 pace run. This is fast. I mean, Mime is showcasing some pace that we have not seen yet on the tournament here, and he's doing it consistently. This is the second time we've seen him on pace of maybe even another world record, not jinxing him too much here, but we see him go into the identity with a great lead, almost 0.4 down to the rest of his opponents now. Let's see if he can get these last couple of slides. Elcon overtaking Bren. Bren releasing that box line a little bit too early, and he will lose quite a lot of pace because of it. Are we looking at an ace coming in here from into the breach we are and another 111.1 incredible pace coming in from mime yeah mime is so fast on this map what a showing two 11.1s in the same game the best match time we'd seen of all the players before this match started was 111.2 by pack 111.3 by offy and so on but 111.1 is a league above that again his stars are so clean Mime constantly able to inch out a little bit of a lead, but as we say that, the mistakes happen on the other side of it. He had a great run earlier, then a mistake. Now a great run and a mistake, and Carmine Corp with an ace here are still in the game, but that is what they have to get. They have to beat Elcon, both of them. And this is looking to be incredibly... Uh Incredibly difficult. No, into the yeah, into the breach. They are looking to get that point. Elcon now over Bren. This is the fight we're looking for. Elcon versus Bren. If Elcon can get that lead here in the ending, going a little bit wider, Bren going super tight. That might give him just a pace. But Otag, no, this is so bad for Carmine. This Corp. Is Bren also with a mistake, over. and now Elcon. Yeah, this is all but over now. Elcon just needs to jump here. Mime also just needs to get into the finish. They have six, seven seconds to work with. So it does look like Into the Breach will take this map four. They will. Bren passing Elcon in the end, but it does not matter. They only had to remain ahead of Otak, and they did. And they take their own map. We go two to two here. So far, the teams have won every map they've chosen. Now we're going to go to Carmine Corp's third choice and see if they can continue that streak. Before we go over there, we want to take a look just one more time at this time that Mime got here in the ending with a 111.113. Just incredible slides here in the ending and Mime just taking home a world record mid-match. Yeah, would love to see the actual replay of that because his start was insane. He gained two tenths of a second right out of the first couple of drifts and kept that lead in the bug slides as well even extending it amazing stuff from mime there but now we're on casey's territory they picked back and forth and their pace here in previous matches has been solid but nothing to be too scared about yet no and we're gonna have to see which team takes this home this is an important map because this map win will put you up to three points and those three points are just always so scary to look at if uh if you're playing against let's say kc the best times from kc going into this map as we have a mistake from otak in the start four seconds that puts them out of deficit elcon with a mistake as well quick changes here between the players 
two mistakes from two players. Bren and Mime left to fight for first. I was gonna quickly mention the stats. Bren and Otak are actually among the slowest players in terms of their peak pace on this map. 58.4 and 58.7. Hopefully they have worked on that pace because Mime and Alcon are both gonna be faster than that. I mean, just as we saw before, the the times on paper, the previous times they've been driving, it has nothing to say because Mime just went from not being the fastest to being world record on the previous map. And now, once again, we see him perform. He is half a second this ahead of Brent with a really, really nice time. Anything 57 on this map is incredibly fast. And let's see if Mime can get it. Oh. At 58.4, there was a little bit of a mistake early on the map that we did not catch. But still, great showcase by Mime. Great ending. I think he even released just to save it because he knew he had such a big lead. The checkpoint splits lined up for a 57 with a great ending. 58-4 to start though, leading his team into a victory 2-1. to one. As we head into another round here, you can take a look at the gears. The players are trying to get fourth gear here and then hold the fourth gear until they can gear up while driving straight on that grass. Bren did not get the best upper gear right there and that's why he got overtaken by two other players, Otak and Mime as we head into a jump. There's board. been a big mistake from Alcon. Three seconds. Ving Mime in a precarious spot. A low jump as well. Hitting oh. that, but Brad makes another mistake. Mime's actually first despite a shaky landing. And with a good ending, he could secure a draw at best here. But it's not he, that easy. He did look consistent here a second ago on the ending. So Otak needs to risk it quite a bit to see if he can get just that little bit of an advantage versus Mime. But Mime is far enough ahead to actually be able to save it. If he gets an inside line here in the ending, it's a little wide, but still more than enough to get first place. And we have a draw on our hands. We have a draw indeed. And the pace from KC is not too convincing yet that they're going to win this map. 58.7 from Mime, enough to secure a win by 0.4. They really have to step up that pace because Mime could probably drive 57 during this game. Oh, 100%. With that ending as well that he's having, he just needs to go a little bit tighter. But that that is a great ending he's showcasing every single round so far. So he does have 57 pace. We just need to see that first uh, section of the map go well. Yeah, and players are surviving it now. We again, remembering back off he setting up all the way wide. Two big mistakes there. Elcon and Oltak both making a mistake, crashing the outside wall, not being able to continue. I believe that was Bren actually, but still two players from either team have made a mistake. And now Oltak versus Mime, this rivalry that we keep coming back to. They qualified to Grand League in the same season. That season it was, I believe, Oltak who won ahead of Mime in points. And then they played World Cup final where Mime won. And now we are in the match. One versus one, heads up in the ending. Who can get the best backwards part? Otak with an inside line to the checkpoint. Half a car length ahead into the pillars, but a wide line there giving Mime a chance to snipe this round away and win that no, one. Whoa, 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 one for his Just, team. Otak! What are you oh my God, by half a second. Oh, I don't know what happened there. I don't know what happened. Why? I think there was a little bit of panic going on. Not gonna lie. The result is the same, but yeah, definitely panicking on that finish line. Deciding in the moment, do I go forwards or backwards here? And he made the right call. It did work out in the ending, but that kind of thing could leave a little stuck in you for the next round as well, you know? It's hard to shake and just get into a clean round right after. That's what we need to see from him. True. And now we actually see KC on the top two positions. Looking to see if they can get an ace right now. Mime currently on last. We haven't seen him on last that much recently. Elkhorn going a little bit too wide. And that's going to cost him some time. He's forced to go into a drift right there. Losing a little bit of that momentum that he had built up. And now Otak and Bren once again on the top two positions. Going into the identity. All the players are so close to each other we're gonna have to see who's gonna risk it and who's gonna save it a little bit of a tire line coming in from mime and he's getting closer to bren elcon and mime looking to close it out they are not gonna be able to bren maintains a great lead and a 57.2 is a nice time and otak sniped elcon for third by seven thousands netting carmine corp the win there huge clutch in the back of the field to get to five to five KC, if they lose this map, they go on to into the Breach's last choice on the back foot, and they really cannot afford that. Into the Breach have looked so dominant on their own picks. 
that KC really have to win this map. Five to five right now, a mistake from Elkon in the back there. Gonna cost him a little bit of time. They need to pass Mime here. This is a great opportunity that you're not gonna get that often. Can they get the ace? Otak coming into the jump with more speed and seems to get a really nice line there with the 360. And Mime will be pushed further into the back. Point two up to Otak. Point five up to Bren. He needs to push it in the ending. He needs to see if he can find some risk. Taking a lot of that booster. Getting more speed going into the ending. But I don't think it's going to be quite... Oh, ah, oh. Just that. Did you see how many corners he caught there with the, with the right wheels? It yep. was a really nice attempt to at least get past one player. You have to dare to go not just close to the corners, but literally over them yeah. to pass players in that identity. He tried, Carmine Corp get an ace and are looking great for a potential win on their map here. But it can be like, it can actually be quite a lot of a difference whether you turn uh, in one, at one point or 0.1 seconds later than that. Cause driving over the corners like that is incredibly risky, but it will save you a lot of time. If the game detects a crash, then you lose so much time it's over. But if it doesn't, then you actually take the most inside line possible. Elcon, no mistake this start, that was the opportunity they had last round. They did make use of it and got the ace, and now a victory is enough. A first and second place is enough, but Bren going that wide, having to release this corner, leaving Otak with a draw to secure. An ace right back would be disaster for KC, and at least they could hope for is that Otak remains ahead, but Mime, he's going to risk that ending once again, Janek. He is. He doesn't go as tight as he did last time. Because, uh, I mean, he did lose the speed because of it. But still, a very clean ending, both from Oltec and Mime. They're going to draw it out. And Carmine Corb is going to be at nine points. Into the Breach needs to get these aces. He's typing go, go, go in chat. I think that was meant for two <laughs> chat. But nine to six now. A good start for KC. And they just need one more point. Also, the peak pace here from KC has gotten a lot better throughout the match. We mentioned 58.7 was some of their best times. Otrak dropping 58.2 now, really stepping up. They have momentum on their side. One more point uh, into the breach, half to ace. They cannot even win a round because that would put them over the line. So, scary situation now. KC are going into the ice with both players ahead. And it puts a lot of pressure on Elcon, who's in fourth place right now, losing speed to the rest of the players. He's going to be 0.4 behind, and he needs to get past both of them. Yeah, both Mime and Elcon needs to be first and second place. And we see a mistake there coming in from Mime. And this looks to be over. Brennan Oltag just need to hit that finish line here without having to respawn. And Ash Pro players, they know that they have the... The safety net of just being able to great save it and scene. drive slow there. That's great. 50, 58.1. I think that was the best match time we saw today. Uh, so great driven by Bren. Carmine Corp will take the fifth map. And it's so interesting how they trade back and forth. They have picked these maps. The pick and ban is coming so clutch for each team. They're picking to their strengths and they're making them work. Really great showing. Carmine Corp on match point now, but let's see some replays. Yeah, we have Mine that uh, saves a little bit of a shaky landing here, but still maintains the pace. And uh, how just, he got first out of yeah, that is yeah. actually incredible. Really nailing down the small details. And then we have Mime and Otak, the intense battle for first. One of them had to win out of the two young rivals, and Mime was able to. Really great showing. But let us jump into Agility Dash. Ag agility Dash, we've seen that earlier today. It's a difficult word to say, apparently. Agility Dash? It's uh, fun to say as well. It sounds fast. Say it three times fast. Agility Dash, Agility Dash, Agility Dash. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we are on Into the Breach's map choice. We cannot say it fast, but they can drive it fast. Two of the fastest players here, they've driven 128.5 in match which is very close to the publicly known world records. Absolutely, and it does look like Mime and Elkon actually have some great median times on this map. Looks like they have a pace that Carmine Corp really haven't been able to match so far. They're not too far behind, so it should be an even match, but 
Uh, if the times that we see here on the stats are anything to go by, uh, Into the Breach are looking better on paper. Yeah, and last time they played this, it was Mime to set the fast times. It was Elcon who drove that little bit more consistent, holding down second and third places. Here in this first round, he's the closest to Bren to try to get a win for his team. Bren hitting the oh. snow, Elcon hitting the flagpole. That is definitely the worst mistake you can make out of the two there. Mime up into first now. Trying to fend off the two French players onto the knife edge. Good transition there, but you see Bren is faster. You see him creeping up closer and closer. Different lines coming through. Mime is going to come back with a bit more speed into the identity. And now the agility dash begins. Low air time here for Bren. Good setup. They both no. go into snipe. They're trying to get past Mime, but Mime's holding on. Somehow he still wins that battle and secures a draw instead of an ace that was looming right there. A close threat. I mean, I cannot believe that Bren got away with clip in the corner like that. His, like, usually when you clip corners on plastic, your car just flies. Like, because pl plastic is very bouncy in this game. Very, very bouncy. So if you clip a corner on plastic, you can just end up flying off the map. But it, luckily, Bren maintained that uh, contact on the ground and was able to get the, uh, the draw. And it's not just the flying part either. It's also the, just that the react to it, right? You yes. see the car clip, you have, like, less than, I think, two tenths of a second to notice that and adapt your line to it. And he's able to do that and at least secure a draw there. Could have been possible for Mai maybe to catch up with the mistake. Sorry, Alcon rather. So we're going to round number two of Agility Dash. Oh. Low air time, but late landing for Alcon in the attempt. He's still gonna be ahead of Otak. Yeah, you see the players, they're going for that outside line on the dirt to be able to rotate their car mid air and land with one side of the wheels earlier than the other to get uh, earlier landing which will let them accelerate earlier it is very complicated to do in a in a round but these players make it look easy once again the speed slides coming in from all the players elcom fighting with bren here in the lead mime also right behind otag needs to see if he can attack here he's currently on fourth place bren going really wide almost doing that same mistake hitting that flagpole just missing it and now mime is on the attack going for the inside line here Taking first for just a second, but does not have the momentum to keep it. And Bren will go into the identity all alone in the lead. But will he be able to not crash? Ooh, Jumping hard. really low, low, speed. low, low speed here for Bren. Maybe Mime can put some pressure on it. They equalize the speed once again. It does look like Mime can maintain it. Ooh, close fight there. But Bren secures a draw. For KC, we had so many draws earlier on freestyle with this exact situation where one of the team's players is driving fast, the other makes a small mistake. Otak there, 0.6 behind. And last round, it was Alcon who made a mistake, resulting in a draw for Into the Breach. Such a close battle in terms of skill. This is going to come down to which team can stay the most consistent in a round where they see a mistake. Right here, beautiful opportunity for KC. Mime has made a small mistake in the start, but enough that they can capitalize. You definitely need to capitalize on mistakes. And I mean, point, ooh, it's my, gonna what a increase. huge mistake. It's gonna be a second here. Okay. Oh, and it could be an ace, Alcon missing that line. This is very dangerous for Into the Breach. Both players are gonna be about one second behind KC. And now remains the question, how do they play this out to ensure that they don't fail the agility dash? Because even if you're trying to save, that part can still make you trip in your shoelaces. That's nope. a tough identity. Agreed, agreed. Like, if this was slowdown or a map like that, where you could save the ending and make sure to still get to the finish line, then they would definitely have this with a 1.4 lead. But the point is that Agility Dash has such a difficult ending that if they fail it close to the ending, they will not get that ace that they're looking for. Small Old mistake. Tag with an early mistake right now, but they're still going to be close to a second ahead. And we're going to have to see if they can uh, save this ending. You can take nothing for granted here. The jumps are so dangerous. They're losing time, but so long as they survive, it's all good for KC. They do what they had to do. They get the ace. They get the ace. Uh, very, very nice clutch coming in from Carmine Corp. You need to be able to capitalize on situations like that. And a second lead is not small in this game. It is huge. Yeah, and you instantly see the times drop slower too. They drove a 129.7 there. And in close rounds, they drive 128.8. Being able to shift that tempo when you need to, to make sure that you just do everything like, you know, foolproof, that you literally cannot fail it. 
and they, they're able to go into the lead now, looking to win the entire match. If Carmine Corp gets five more points on this map, they win the game. So scary for Into the Breach, who are on the back foot on their own choice. True, but I mean, sometimes we do see Mr. X Elcon almost not making that jump happen. He luckily did not lose too much time there, but that could have ended wrong there for Elcon. Going for the lowest amount of airtime possible and oh. risking it a little bit too much, hitting that inside line, trying to go tighter than in his opponents. And now Elcon is going to be all the way in the back, and we might have another ace. Oh, the speed slide from Mime is insane. He is not going to let this ace happen without a fight. Let's play it out. 128s are going to happen here from either team, I believe. Mime really going to push them to their limit. Going for wide for speed there into the tech part. Catching back up before the next drift. And now the knife edge. We know he goes very tight here to try to get an inside line. But it is going to be less speed than Bren and Otak who survives it. And then this wide setup. The jump across the penalty grass. Landing as early as possible onto the platform. Bren is about three tenths ahead, but Bren is slower onto the jumps. He's trying to save it as best as he can. Mine clips the corner, clips another corner. Where is Otak? Could this be an ace? They ace yes. them, and it's eight to two. I mean, you can only clip so many corners before your car just says, nope, we're gonna just, nah, we can't do this anymore. It is an ace coming in from Carmine Corp, and now this map is looking super scary for Into the Breach. KC, a team that not a lot of people, I think, had beating into the breach in this matchup are just one win away from doing so. After six grueling maps here, they could take it home. But this is where the nerves also start to show. You know it's that close, but you still have to drive 128. You still have to survive the agility dash identity faster than two of the best players on this map in the past two weeks and, and i mean sometimes the most difficult goal to score is the one with an open net and that is where common corp is right now they all they need to do is get not last and they will be fine but, oh mistake oh. mistake from elcon in the uphill and before the full speed part that is going to be costly that might be close to one second here otak into the lead now mine going wide on the speed slide not getting the best exit speed as we can see here, a win would do it. A draw would put them to 9-3. to three, A dominating scoreline for KC. This is looking like they're on the path to victory. Mime has to. Has to get first place. He definitely has to. And that would only end up in a draw. Carmine Corp would still be on 9 points. So it's going to be up to this ending. Can Otak, can Bren maintain the lead here? Will they get an ace to close it out? Or will Mime be able to get ahead of them he needs to overtake both these players getting a good first jump that's a lot of speed coming in from mime overtaking both mime them sending can it. he make it he is sending it to the moon and he makes it into the finish incredible ending from mime he had no like no room left to improve that that was perfect gaining three four tenths of a second and at least keeping the dream alive for one more round but from here on out, it has to be flawless. We have to see aces. Aces and aces coming in from Into the Breach. Now, the last couple of rounds, Elkan has been the one to crash. So we'll take a look at him. Hopefully, he can get that consistency going. Oh, small mistake from Bren hitting that grass a little bit. That costs you two tenths of a second. We saw Into the Breach in this situation earlier. They crumbled a bit under the pressure. Bren probably communicating that mistake, and another mm. one, and another one right back. He's not in his rhythm, he's off the trajectory he practiced, and that is a potential now. Four into the breach to get the first ace, Alcon so close to that corner so many times. We're barely avoiding disaster here, Otak just needs a second place. If he beats one of them, it's enough to win the game. He doesn't have to get first, just has to remain ahead of one red car. Yeah. Both Mime and Elkon need to overtake Otak. It is not easy here. We sh we have seen his consistency on Agility Dash. He is really good at this ending as well. He is now getting a little bit further ahead than Elkon. And Elkon needs to overtake him. They need to get this ace going into the identity. Otak is looking really good. Mime 
getting that jump as well, but Elkhorn needs to overtake. This is Elkhorn and Otag. Who's gonna be able to make it? Otag going really, really risky. Oh, getting even more ahead of Elkhorn. Elkhorn needs to push it in the ending. It doesn't look like it. Otag gets the point for the team, and Carmine Corp takes the match. Carmine Corp takes down into the breach an insane showcase from the French squad. They lost to G1 last week. They came into this week with a lot to prove. They did their homework on the maps and they take a win here. I mean, that's an incredible showing from Into the Corp. Uh, or